Now, one other thing I'd like to note is that I see a lot of extra pieces in here that don't really look right. Uh, we have <laughs> toilets and, and sinks um, in rooms that doesn't look like they should be. This looks like a conference room, and I've, I don't think I want toilets in the conference room. So we have some issues here dealing with the height 3D aspect of the model. You know, Revit has to decide how much of the model to show for each level. Well, how's that accomplished? Well, within the, in this case, within this view template, another one of these categories down here is called view range. That is the three dimensional, the third dimension, Z axis, some people call it the up and down um, settings for what shows in this view. Now it's a whole topic by itself and I'm just going to touch upon it here to give you some basics, but you'll want to look into this further. In fact, right here, learn more about view range. It's if you click on that, it'll open up in your browser, the Autodesk help um, on all about view range. The basics are, and first of all, the view ranges behave differently in a floor plan versus a ceiling plan. So that's another piece of complexity. But in the floor plan, which we're dealing with, you see hey, they have all these colors and, and, uh, and lines. The basics are this blue range, number five, is called primary range. You've got a bottom, a cut, and a top. So three is the bottom, two is the cut plane, and one is the top. The bottom, of course, defines the bottom of what you want to see on that level. One, the top defines what you how far up you want to see, and two is where does it cut the elements to see them on the plan? This is cutting through windows. This is cutting through doors. This is so the lines that you cut will look different on your plan view. They might be bolder than lines like a desk below that are not. This is all set up already in the view template, but it can be changed if we need to. There's also some visibility below the actual level you're at. And this number four is called, um, I'm sorry, number four is the offset. Number six is called the view depth. And the whole idea of the offset is that each of these can have an offset too. Let me show you what I mean by that. Go back to the view range box. Again, here we go. The primary range has the bottom, which we have set up as the associated level, which means we're on level one. So it's associated with level one. There's no offset from level one. It's right on level one. The cut plane is based on the associated level, but an offset of four feet above the associated level. So let me, they have a mini diagram here. So our bottom is exactly on the level. Our cut plane to where to cut the walls and other items is four feet above. This can affect whether you see windows or not, whether you see switches on lighting plans, things like that. So that's important. And then the top, we have the level above with no offset. So our top goes clear up to the level above. That's how our template is set up. The view depth below, we don't have anything below showing. We just have stops at the associated level. If you did want to see things like let's say on a first floor, if you want to see um, foundations, um, things like that, you may want to extend this down um, to the level below, unlimited. You can see everything below the floor. Uh, you may want to give it an offset. Let's say we want to see a negative three feet below. So like I say, this is a whole topic itself dealing with this view range and um, you, you can really get down a rabbit hole when you start looking at how this affects views. 
But for now, just remember we have associated level for the bottom, cut plane four feet, and the top is the level above. Well, why are we seeing why are we seeing items that are obviously above the level above? Well, there's only a level above if we actually create a plan of that level. We have levels, actual levels, we just don't have a plan made for that. So it doesn't know which level above to use. So what we need to do is create a second floor. So how we do that under the view tab, plan view, it's a plan. Under plan view, you can do a floor plan, which is what we want. You could also do a reflected ceiling plan, which we use for lighting. There's other things like structural plans, a plan region we will learn more about later. That's the piece where we can create a sub region that has a different view range, like the gymnasium we talked about. So there's that, but let's create a floor plan. All right, type floor plan. Now select one or more levels for which you want to create a plan. Well, there's, here's all the levels in our project. Um, we are not going to create plans for all of those levels. Also, this checkbox is checked, do not duplicate existing views. That means we already have a level one view for floor plan. So it's not on the list. We have these other level one items, but not true level one. That keeps us from making another level one. We want to make level two. Now we could highlight a number of levels and make them all at once. But right now I just want to focus on one level at a time to show you the process. So level two, okay. Okay, it created a level two, and here it is on the left. It's a level, it just gave it a generic level O2 name. Now you look at this, you say, hey, I, I these look like lights. It's kind of a strange pattern, but we have some lights showing. Uh, we've got the toilet issues, uh, all these things. Well, the first thing you want to check here is when you create a view, it just automatically applies a view template. This electrical plan is a view template that just comes with Revit and so it's not what we want to use. So if we click on the view template, now on the left we have a choice of all of our view templates. Well, the ones we use are the ones with scales associated with them. So we want to use again the power plan eighth inch and then say OK. And that you can see the power of a view template that automatically turns on and off the things that we do and don't want to see, including the grid bubbles from the architect and those ADA clearance lines are gone. So once you've set this view template up um, and apply it to a plan view, you can see the power of this. Um, it's almost like layer control. It saves you a lot of work. So we've done that. Well, let's go back and look at our first floor, see, see what happened. Now that we have a second floor, see what happened to those toilets. Look at that, cleaned up. Because we have now a level two plan, the view range knows to stop our visibility at the second floor. So now we don't have items on the second floor or even higher showing up on our first floor. So that cleans up that issue. Back to level two, double click it. Um, we need to apply our scope box to this. We already applied our view template. Now we need to apply the scope box over here on the right. There's no scope box. So we want to do building and apply. There, pulls the grid lines in. We do have to modify the grid bubbles on each view. It's kind of a pain, but you know, some plans may have different arrangement um, of grid bubbles, so they keep it very flexible. But it's a simple matter of moving these around. Okay. Now it's going to prompt us to save the project. We want to do that every time it prompts us. Just takes a second. 
I mean, our electrical plan or model is not huge. The link from the architect was, but this isn't. Okay, so we have that. Now, we still have this issue of toilets in where they don't belong. Why? Again, because this is showing objects above our second floor, and we don't have a third floor made. We don't have a third floor plan made. So, again, that's... um will get fixed as we create the rest of the plans. Another thing I want to do here is let's rename this. And these are just names for organizing our plans in our browser over here. Um, this does not have to be what displays on the actual sheets that we create. And I'll show you how that works later. For now, let's just call this 02. Go cap, second floor, power. All right, so that's the basics of setting these plans up. And you can go through all the rest of the plans to do the same thing. Um, the penthouse plan that, that we know we have, um, it's kind of a roof plan. We have a separate roof. Let me show you a separate roof um, template, view template for like a different scale. Some some projects uh, you try to show the entire roof you couldn't show it at eighth inch so we'd go to 16th inch um, if you need to do that you can go here and, sh and use that you can have a separate view template for the roof in our case it'll most likely work with just our power plan eighth inch view but you know project by project things are different so we'll keep that that way so there um, we have floor plans for power done um, you know, we may need to tweak those more later if we find other things we want to change. But this is a good point to stop on these.